we will look the other way as you copy our ideas for pre-release. Welcome to the podcast where we discuss how to outmaneuver your opponents. I'm Faith, and I'm here with J-Rod and his dudeness. Before we begin, I was graciously invited to be on the I Rebel podcast with Jedi Geek Girl, where we talked about the top five cards to pick up for Shadows of the Galaxy. You can find out which cards we chose from the link in the description. This is not a drill. This week is the pre-release for Shadows of the Galaxy, and today is all about how to prepare. That base. J-Rod, what are your, t- what are your tips for this pre-release? Yeah, I mean, I think this set in particular really pushes you into an archetype. For a last set, you kind of just pick good cards and put them together. But I think this set, you really want to work on a synergy, whether it's Mandalorians, Bounty Hunters, Underworld. Um, a lot of those key keywords in this, I think, is very important to keep an eye on and, and what cards work together the best. Um, I think it's what's going to you're going to see the most success with and limited. So that's the first thing I'd start looking for when I'm opening my packs. Awesome. Thank you. What about Dunas? What are your thoughts? Play as many cards with ambush as you can. <laughs> like straight up. If it has ambush, slam it in your deck. Cards like Loud Rider, cards like Modded Cohort, cards like uh, other cards that I can't think of because I should have been more prepared, but I'm not. <laughs> Finnick Shan as a leader. That gives your units four or less ambush. Like all these things are great. Those two cards I mentioned are both at commons, so you're gonna see those all over the place. The modded cohort specifically, I think, is actually really good. Four four ambush is pretty dope. I expect and, that to see some constructive play to be honest. I think it's that good. And for that reason, a three mana three fours actually might be a little a little sus. And some against a green hero deck because they're just going to get gobbled up alive by the, the cohort each time. But yeah, draft cards with ambush, as much ambush as you can, and I think you'll be good. I think for me, what I picked up there is talking about the rarity of the cards. And I think that's an important part of Limited is understanding that you're going to get packs and it's not like Constructor where you get to choose any number of cards. You are restricted to the cards that you open. In pre-release, like in Spark Rebellion, you're going to get six packs, and you are going to get access in the pre-release to Mando and Moth leaders. Uh, so you will guarantee get one heroism and one villainy leader. Apart from right. that, it's just leaders that you open. Right. But af- after that, you're going to find a lot of value in those uncommon cards. So I think looking at uncommon cards in your pool is going to be important. I, I think one of the biggest ones that I can think of is going to be a Forlom. I think Forlom is super good. Four four Ambush. Then if you get a Zuckus as well, then you could really start bringing the Ruckus. So I think the key card or the key thing to note on the very first card that he brought up as a bomb, what keyword did it have on it? Ambush. And cunning. It's an cunning aspect. That's uh, what it means. That, ambush, my dudes. Honestly, as I was looking through a lot of the cards for, for uncommons that I felt were really powerful, there was a couple of other ones that I liked, but like yellow seemed to have a ton. Like it has Fennec Shan, Enfys Nest. Both of those have ambush. Both of those are very good cards. It also had, what was the other card? Millennium Falcon, right? It's also an, potentially an ambush, and it has Smuggle as well. Great card at uncommon. Like these are all things you definitely want to be looking for, I think, in this set is... Like Duna said, un- ambush cards that affect the board immediately that have big old booties is the key part of it. You got to remember as well that in this in a limited environment, there are going to be cards that are going to that you're not even going to consider for constructed that are going to shine here. And this card is not a card that isn't going to be seen in constructed. I think this card will be seen in constructed. But when we look at a card that's like the three four for three bounty hunter, reputable hunter, who costs one less of an enemy unit has bounty. That is a card that, even though your deck isn't fully formed around it, you're still going to get its effect off sometimes because your opponents are going to be running those cards with bounties. They're going to be running Coattail, the 2-3 space for one. That's a good card. Your opponents can run that. That means that now you can play a 3-4 on, on the ground. Cards like Clone Deserter, the 2 3 1 drop green hero okay. with the bounty draw card, restore it one. And that's um, with nothing in your deck that you did, which you can add bounties as well to make it even more effective. Correct. 
Like you're going to see those cards around for sure. How do you guys feel about this set, Moth and Mando, as opposed to Luke and Vader from set one? That's a really good question, actually. So, like, right off the bat, I think, just at a surface level, the power level of Luke and Vader was greater than the power level of Moth and Mando. This is is just my initial feelings on the subject. That being said, for these two specifically, I think Moth probably has more value than Mando does. Mando needs a certain threshold of upgrades to actually be worthwhile. And so unless you're trying to leverage his Mandalorian keyword or you've got a lot of upgrades, I'm not so sure Mando is the choice. But you might just be forced to play it because it is sealed. You have to play with what you got. And if all your other best cards are in yellow hero or even green hero, but you didn't get any other hero leader, for example, you might be forced to play with it. But I actually think Moff Gideon is a really good choice, just period, because his ability to trade up in the early game, you know, right? Like you, you're, you're never not trading, basically. Right. Right. You can always just trade off the early game and get, sometimes you can get those value trades, and value trades are absolutely king. Now, I will say in this set, there are a lot more pings, free pings going around on common leaders than there were in set one. So value trading isn't as quote unquote profitable in this set as it was in set one, but it's still what you want to be doing. I would agree. I, I would also double down on his take that I think Vader and Luke were substantially better at limited than Mando and Gideon. Now, I'm not saying that those cards are worse overall. They could still see some constructive play potentially and prove to be better there. But I think in limited, I think Mando, I, I hate having too many upgrades in my deck because there's times where you can draw all upgrades or all units and then the ability does nothing. And that's always awkward when that happens. So when, in those kind of decks, that can definitely happen. Where man, man, excuse me, people want to say grief. It's not grief. What's his face? The other guy, not Mando. Moff Gideon? Moff Gideon, thank you, yes. <laughs> Gideon is like, he's, like I said, I think very good. And he, I think he's probably your best bet. He just he just does, he makes your little units better. And then you can still play those big units to get to late game and try to win the game later as well. So I, I think that he has a lot of promise, especially for limited, where trading up is definitely something that you want to be doing as often as possible. So unfortunately, you can't pull any Darth Vader's with him because that would be a, one of the best cards to pull with him. But yeah. So pull a... Mall, which is still pretty all right, and you probably do that more often. I, I would say I, I I agree with you guys about the Luke Invader, and what I think, in my opinion, helped Luke Invader, and as you guys are alluding to, is the fact that like you were going to draft cards in the aspect color of heroism or villainy, so those are generally better cards. So you're already building towards them. This, as you guys are saying, do does require a little bit more sacrificing your deck building. Less so with Moth than with Mando. I would agree with that as well. I, I think I'm pretty excited for some of the the leaders that are in set two. Some of them are definitely better than others. And so that will also, as you guys mentioned, will factor into which leader you choose. 100%. Which color do you think is going to be stronger than others in the limited environment? For me, I definitely think it's going to be yellow. If I sit across from anyone that has Cad Bane, I'm probably going to be terrified because that deck will have a ton of the good ambush cards that we had mentioned earlier, as well as Cad having one of the best abilities in the set, in my opinion, for a leader, especially for limited. Just having those pings, being able to go at spots, and you know you can't choose where they go. Typically, you'll have enough time to be able to remove the units and kind of put it where you want it to go, even if your opponent you know, chooses to put in a different spot than you expect it to. And still, usually, even out at the end, and helps you remove units, trade up, and all that kind of stuff. So I think yellow's probably, because of all the ambush in it, is going to be one of the stronger colors again, as it was in the last set. If I had to give a second bonus to, I'd probably give it to probably green as well, which also was a popular one last set too. But, a, you know, a leader like Boba Fett, Hero, I think he he offers a lot of value as well to, with ambush units. And like we said, ambush, we keep repeating it, but like it is generally just the best keyword in the game. And it's not even that close in my opinion. 
they haven't even come remotely in the same ballpark as to ambush for a keyword. And him just allowing you to give the plus one plus oh, the same thing as kind of what Gideon does, but he has keywords. So if you have ambush, they can trade up as well. So it's it just there's so many things that can happen with Boba Fett leader. He's also a common, so you probably see him pretty often. So like him and Cad Bane are ideally what I'm hoping to pull with some decent pulls for those decks, personally. What about you, Dudeness? I got a little lost in the sauce there. Well, what, what, what was the question, actually? Which color combination do you think oh, is... which color combination, right. Oh, yeah, you know, for sure, 100% yellow is the correct answer. It has the most units with ambush, unless I'm just wrong there. But I'm pretty sure that's right. It has the only two drop with ambush in the game at common. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it's got another four drop common with ambush, the chain code collector. Yeah, I mean, you just, it's got Phoenix Shan as a top end at uncommon with ambush. That's absolutely a bomb. And before that, you can curve out with an Infy's Nest that has ambush, which is, which is ambush tribal. That's cool. So yeah, no, no, it's yellow. It's not even close. Now it's, we haven't even talked about McClunky as a card, dude. That card, that card is going to be great. In your which card? Suit. Which card is that again? Which card is that again? That that is a McClunky, the one cost, cunning card that simply says return a friendly non-leader underworld unit to its owner's hand. If you do, it deal three damage to a unit. Now see, I'm curious why the phrase "if you do" is even there, but. Anyways, he deals three damage. It it's nukes a dude. It's fantastic. It goes it crosses arenas. It lets you replay when played effects. It, it's fantastic. Like shielded, like shielded, or let you, let you re shield it. Let you re. Oh my god! There's so many card. Yellow's not even close. Relentless pursuit. Another banger. Common card. The best capture card. It's not even close. If you've got the bounty hunter synergy, you get a shield token to it. It's absolutely bonkers. So I think the correct answer is if you can play yellow at your pre-release, boys, play yellow. And ladies. And ladies. And I, I would specify more in saying cunning villainy, I think, is the really strong one. Cunning heroism, I think, falls off. Uh, there are there are some good neutral ones, but I think the access of what you get in cunning villainy, especially as mentioned earlier, mm. uh, Zuckus and Forlom. But you can also get access to the McClunky and the Relentless Pursuit. I would say my secondary tier that I'm thinking is actually Aggression Villainy. Now, some of the commons are a little bit less in the color combination, which does hurt it. But for the uncommons, you get some pretty good cards. I think Chrysanthemum is a great card. And then also some of the bounties in red, I think, are pretty strong. In particular... To play your aggression villainy cards, you'll want a leader maybe like Bosk. But something like Guild Target, uh, IG-11, both interesting cards, I think, as Unlicensed Headhunter, these can all be pretty strong and limited. Also, and really quickly, I just want to touch, because Dunus asked why I felt these worded the way it was, and we skipped past it, and I wanted to answer that, so I'm going back now. Um, it's it's answered, It's answered. Uh, written that way, because in this game, you do as much as you can. So if there was an opportunity where you couldn't bounce a unit, it would still allow you to do three damage even if you didn't have a unit to bounce. So that forces you to have to bounce the unit. And if you bounce the unit, then you get the three damage. Sure. For all exactly. you rules lawyers out there, you will have appreciated that segment by J-Rod. But I actually kind of agree with you, Faith. I do think aggression is pretty all right. you know, And I'm totally fine playing a Han Solo deck at the pre-release. Well, what a great I, transition... I what a great transition now to talk about which leaders, apart from Moff and Mando, that you're interested in playing in your pre-release, if you get them in your packs. I mean, I definitely want to play a Han Solo just because I'm an aggression boy at heart, right? And I think some of the red hero commons are okay, especially that two-drop with Han specifically. It lets you play it as a one-drop for one. I'm not sure how good that is going to be in draft, but it certainly sparks a joy, and I have to make that play at least. For me, honestly, it's probably a toss-up between Bo-Katan, so I'd like to do some Mandalorian stuff. I think that'd be really cool. Or probably Rey. I think she's going to be really strong and limited, especially with that uh, Restore 3. 
And the experience token, I think, is not something to sneeze at as well. So, as I, I do just want to interject that the actual only ex- really experience that I've had with Limited so far was with a Ray deck, and it was severely disappointing. Interesting. Because to be fair, that was a pilot. That was a pilot error more than a for sure. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure, for sure. But like, I basically had the same thought. You're giving that experience, but it didn't feel good against actual good leaders. Because I, I, I will say there was I drafted like three of the the clone dissidents. The one cost two threes for green mm-hmm. hero, right? And you buff that in the turn one into a three four. That sounds pretty good, right? But then next turn, your opponent who's playing Cad Bane just plays a Cloud Rider, pings off your boy, and then trades straight into it, and he gets to draw a card. So, like, against good leaders, I'm not so sure it's going to be worth it, but, you know, we'll see. We need next week to find out. Tune, tune in next time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with you about Han. One thing I like about Han is the fact that you, I think you want as little as little things to go wrong as possible. And Han is just like, anything you play, any you play, cost us gets dealt damage to it. So it's just so flexible. Where some of the other cards that might be really good, might be, you might not open those cards. So there, you have to get both the leader and the supporting cast behind it. And the question is, can you get enough of that? That can be really strong. But if you don't have enough Underworlds, he definitely does drop off. Hmm. And really quickly, while we're on Han, another little rules tip here for people who are new. So the rules tip for Han is if you happen to get a stolen land speeder and try to play it for free with Han, it does not work. It just dies and goes in your graveyard. That's the ruling. There's a bunch of information within that as well. Just know it goes to your graveyard and doesn't do what you want. Which is very sad because that would be something that I absolutely would be abusing in set two. But thankfully, the devs are smarter than that. I think the leader I'm excited for is Jabba the Hutt. And I know I earlier had just said that you want as little finickiness as possible. I think Jabba does help that a little bit. You can have cards that are going to benefit from Bounty, like Chrysanthemum. Maybe you get lucky and get a Django. Uh, and then you're all, or Reputo Bounty Hunt. As mentioned earlier, and these are going to benefit of just having a bounty out in general. And so the fact is really nice. It's going to allow for combos. And then I do think that his on deploy is going to just capture something. Now you do have to have another unit on the board, but the fact that you can just like instantly take a non leader off the board, I think it's huge because in limited, you're only going to have one or two bombs, usually one or two cards that are really worth taking off the board. So if you can minimize their one or two big threat, they also might not have an answer to take out that other guy. So I think you have a lot of potential with Java. True, but it is important to note that Java is rare, so your chances of seeing the boy at your pre-release are not great. But the other green New villain leader Hondo Anaka, you definitely have a high chance of getting and I definitely think he is another guy that you should not ignore if you get the pool. Because like really the most important tip for your sealed pool is don't try to force anything. Let the cards tell you what deck you should be making. Right? You should be just trying to play as many of the best cards as you can, whatever colors allow you to play the most good cards. Then figure out what leader adheres to that. I know J. Rod said earlier this set you want a little bit more synergy, but in sealed though, card quality is still king over trying to play subpar cards and get the synergy going. Conversely, I, if I open a poll, I am playing red heroism with Moff Gideon. I do not care. Sure. Huh? And listen, and this is your option because we're playing Star Wars unlimited. Wait, I'm confused. You want to play Moff Gideon with Poe? <laughs> I'm just saying, I will do. If I open Poe, I'm playing Poe, regardless of which leader I'm in. Okay, got That's it. what I'm he's saying. saying he, he's saying he'll slam that bad boy down for nine in a heartbeat and not think twice about it. Gotcha. Okay. Understood. Um, it's, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for him. 
I will say, if I pull the Hunter showcase, I will play Hunter. Just to flex. Because <laughs> Hunter <laughs> actually is booty cheeks. And to be clear, if I so, pull an other showcase that I don't like or don't think it's good, I will not play that. I'll just sleeve it and put it in my binder. But if I pull Hunter, who is a showcase that I want out of this set, because I, I think I might try to collect all the clone leaders moving forward, because this is so rad that I, I, I will play it, even if it's bad and I lose. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to worry about that, J-Rod, because you can't open showcases, so it's okay. Why are you going to jinx me like that? God, I'm like, come on! I actually have a buddy that he purchased a case, pulled a Boba Fett showcase out of it, played like once at a store, was a, a draft. He came in like fourth one A pack, and it had a showcase turret in it. And that's the extent of how much he's played the game. That seems cool. I am not tilted in the slightest, just to be no, clear on why, that. Why would you be? I don't understand. I am extremely happy for my friend there. Yeah. And not jealous at all. So you know, who, you know who's also friends is leaders in set one and leaders in set two. And so let's try to buddy up some of those leaders. Think What's the equivalent of like a – or is there equivalent of a Boba Fett or of, as we all liked, Jin in Limited? But then that there's is there an IG88 equivalent in set two? Where where are you seeing which leaders are gonna match up in your mind? Finn is IG. Finn is IG. So you have very little hope for Finn. All right. What about you, dude? Ness? Well, I don't I don't like the disrespect my boy IG just got. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Finn. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, my boy's catching strays for no real reason, just because. But, I mean, no, I don't... That's a question. I have no idea, mm-hmm. honestly. I've never really thought about that. I mean, Finn doesn't seem good. Afra doesn't seem good. Um, Not for limited. Don't think Afra's good. Because you're going to die to her, her ability. So, but, uh, I mean, I don't know. That's a really good point, J-Rod. A reminder, in limited, your deck is minimum card size of 30. And the rule in almost all circumstances is to build to your minimum deck size in limited. You may, some people may build 32, but generally I want your deck to be 30 cards. And yes, you will potentially mill out in limited. So be aware of that. Even without playing leaders that mill or your opponent playing cards that mill, sometimes you can just last that long. Games are definitely can be more grindy in a sealed because Not everybody's playing with good cards. Yeah, and I think that's why leaders that have good abilities are actually worth more in limited, because typically your leader's going to die in one or two turns, they're not going to stick around too often, but a leader with a good ability can still affect the game while being not deployed, like a Cad Bane or a Hero Boba Fett or like a Bo-Katan Kreeze. Haven't even Um, mentioned our boy Bosk, giving out three damage on bounties. Kira is also, I think, pretty decent as well, right? Because she does the, she does two damage, gives them a shield, which can be very beneficial to a lot of units that want to trade into other units and live. So, you know, th- there's that's something that takes into account is how good your leader is for face fight. Like Kylo Ren, I don't think is very good in limited at all. I think he's a very good constructed leader, but I think that's where you leave him. You don't play him in limited. He's not very good. There's no force throw. You know, you, you don't really have the force units to make that really good. It's hard to have aggro. A lot of the aggro stuff is like bounty hunters and like bounties in that color. But like he doesn't get the help in this set that he needs to be good and limited, which is why I think he's a rare leader, which is, I think, a good call on FFG's part on that because he doesn't really mesh well with the cards that are in his colors <clears throat> in this set. Right. I, I think a card you're going to see a lot of in decks, anyone that's playing blue, I think you're going to see a lot of rivals fall. Because it's just a sort of, again, with only one or two bombs are going to have. And this just says, you don't have a bomb, no. Oh, it can take out a leader. If they're playing Jabba. Now, to be fair, again, in my in my limited, limited experience with my raid deck, I used Rival's Fall, took out my opponent's Cad Bane when he deployed it. Felt really good. Still lost that game. Pilot oh. error. Definitely could be pilot error. Could be deck construction error. I, I have a question for the podcast. I might have an answer. Okay, great. So um, you can only answer this if you want to store showdown. Um, who's want to store showdown? 
I have. Me? Hey, do this. Oh, you didn't answer. It's weird. Okay, just checking. Wait, wait. He at least got a finalist, right? Yeah, yeah. He did a finalist, right? Yeah. I think we lost him here, folks. Wait, wait. Top four though. <laughs> oh, not now. You just now you just bringing him down. Okay. Now yeah, we're just, now we're just I, bullying. I, I, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just bullying him now. All right, we're, we're gonna stop bullying him. Sorry, dudes. Well, actually, one of those things, though, another car that does spark joy to me in Limited is going to be Scanning Officer. That is going to be a card which might just win you the game. Know what it does. Two-cost command, Imperial Official 2-3. None of that's what's important. The important part is it's one plate. You reveal three enemy resources. Defeat each resource with the smuggle keyword revealed this way. For each resource defeated this way, its controller puts the top card of their deck into play as a resource. You should know, when cards get put into the resource row, they enter tap, or they enter exhausted. They enter exhausted. And so you can, if you hit two of them, you're taking your, you're taking your opponent away from two resources that they're going to play that turn. You can hit more than, you can hit three things, and if I, on turn two, they have no, nothing they can play. I could, I could imagine a scenario where you you might be playing a deck and you've got some smuggle cards in your opening hand and you slap them down, right? And then you claim, you go on to the next round, then you slap down another smuggle card. And then you're, before you can use any of your resources, your opponent plays Scanning Officer and he just negates your entire turn. And no. that would not be tilting at all. <laughs> you would be the most tilting? That, right? <laughs> No, I've I've never experienced that in my entire life. <laughs> There's something even more tilting than that. Let's just say you're in a slog fest with your opponent, and you guys are at 11 resources, and the game's like 2020. 20. Each you got 10 HP left, and trying to battle it out for the finish. And your opponent plays Scanning Officer, and you're playing Hondo Onaka, so your deck is chock full of smuggle stuff. Chock full. Let's just say they hit three cards. Well, not only are they exhausting your, your resources, they're also milling you for three off the top of your deck or for two or however many they hit. True, other true, true, cards. True, true, true. And when you only have 30 cards, you get to those late games. Those three, two or three cards can be a massive swing because that could be nine or six damage on your base and just lose like that. And that's it. That's game. So and it should be remembered that like in limited, your, your opponents are going to be playing a disproportionately large amount of smuggle cards compared to a regular game. Mm -hmm. Just because they can only play what they get, and there are smuggle cards in the in the common slot especially, so they're going to be running. Uh, the, the tough thing is going to be finding them. That's definitely the, the, the theme behind the card because you're trying to scan them out. It, it, it is an interesting card that, honestly, I think I'm going to play on turn one, though. Because if I'm, if I'm my opponent... If I have smuggle cards in my opening hand, I'm more likely to put those down as my opening resources. Right. It depends if you go first or second. Right. I mean, if, on if, it. like a, a, lot, a lot of the value there is negating their entire turn. 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 If you're just yeah. cycling through my thing, sure. yeah, it's annoying, but I can live with that. Right. Sure. Good, a, good point. Good point. It's not being able to take an action and just having to claim it, not having a unit on the board in the game that's all about unit focused combat. That's a good point. That's a good point. It, the tempo loss is so huge and really hard to come back from. One thing to know about this card is there is some interaction with, like, you're revealing three enemy resources. but And you do get some choice in that, but it, it doesn't stop your opponent from randomizing those resources before you choose. If they put their first resource on the left-hand side of their playmat and then go to the right, they can shuffle those all up before you choose your target. Correct. Absolutely. So, ju so just something to remember about Scanning Officer, you, you won't be able to necessarily pay attention to what they did unless they choose not to shuffle their cards. Then you will have a choice. Yeah, I mean, if, if someone plays Scanning Officer against me and I have more than three resources, they're being shuffled, right? I think so. Now, that's going to be awkward for ready and... An exhaust, but I guess you could just shuffle it and then just recreate the same. All right, if you had three exhausted, one unexhausted, you shuffle them all up and then slam down three exhausted and put one. I don't, but I don't. That might matter. I don't know. That's that's kind of weird, actually. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure how that interaction is going to work. I don't know how that works because 
then because you're almost always going to be choosing the open resource because you want to have the chance to exhaust a resource, right? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. Well, any other final thoughts for our listeners on what they should do in their limited pre-release event? They should uh, have fun. Have fun, but still play to win. Absolutely. Oh, and don't be like the guy at Dunas's pre-release for set one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had forgotten about that. <laughs> that was just like with understanding, honestly. Like now, like I'm, it's fine now. It's you know, it's cool. But th- yeah. at the time, yeah, it was very like, oh, this isn't. The... I was very taken aback at the time, which is, was part of the whole thing because I was so taken aback by the objection in the first place. But this time, I... it should be a lot more chill vibes for sure. So well, I, know, I, I know it can be, I know it can be misunderstanding, but it's just to a reminder everyone, like pre-releases are a great time to get people that are new into the game. So mm-hmm. you may have people that are going to be new, especially with the kind of shortages we're hearing about. This will be people's opportunity to get packs and people that are new to the game into the game. So be friendly to your opponent. So you still play to win. We all play to win. But you doesn't mean you have to be a jerk. But if you built your deck and you're sitting there looking around, find a new player. Go sit down with them and go, hey man, how you doing? How, you need some help building your deck? I've been playing for a while. I have some good experience. I can maybe help you you know, tends to do a little better. Because here's the thing, even if you help them with their deck and their deck is 10 times better than yours, if you're a competent player, you should still be able to beat them because they're not going to know how to play the game as skillfully as you. And in this game, player skill is more important than deck power, in my personal opinion. And I've seen it throughout all of my drafts and all of the previous that I did, which has been a lot. So that's been my key, like being friendly and helping them. And guess what? If they beat you one time, that makes them happy and make maybe they'll make them come back and play more, which is your end goal at pre releases. It's not necessary to win everything in the world. Well, just ask Jared. I play terrible cards in my constructed deck and I still win somehow. So you can happen. He's got a horse show up his butt or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks everyone for tuning in, listening to us here on this pre release weekend. We look forward to playing games. If you see us at your event, please come say hi. We look forward to hearing about your events in the comments below, where you're going to be playing, and how many events you're going to be entering. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Cheers, y'all. Later.